it's clearly been some time since the King Guru of Lightning has done a chapter review in the past few weeks, and that's because I have been fairly busy. I'm going to chalk it up to life, and I'm going to call it a goddamn day. All right? Senior year, 24 credit hours, the last few weeks of senior year, a lot of projects to do, and I'm graduating on Saturday. I'm going to be completely done Tuesday night. After Tuesday, all I'm doing, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm chilling until Saturday, where I'm going to graduate, get my diploma, and be an electrical engineer. Well, have a bachelor's of science in electrical engineering. You, you, you get my point. You get my fucking point. Right. So, the point here is this, all right? I'm busy. <laughs> now, that being said, fuck my life. One Piece. Whoa. Mugga D. Don Quixote. Now, oh my god. Okay, where do I start? Because... The chapter had awesome things, amazing things, and at the same time, it had really shitty things. So, let's start here, at the shitty. First of all, a few of the pages were dedicated to the King Riku motivational speech in order to rouse the citizens to run to the center of the country, or to the epicenter of the bird cage. We could have shaved off a lot of panels... We were seeing these random folk like, oh, hospital, someone help us, grandma, I can't move anymore, let's give up hope. Riku speech, like, five pages, and all of a sudden, grandma, sprint, yeah, that was hilarious, but I'm like, we, we could have made that into, like, one page. Like, seriously, I'm not joking when I say that, but it is what it is. So that was, eh. But what was really bad in the chapter was the fact that apparently 20 minutes skipped, time skipped, mini time skipped. 20 minutes from when Flamingo starts pulling out the Awakening stuff, which I'll get to, obviously. And then from the from that to the King Riku speech. Really? Eat your Oda. Really? Eat your Oda. Really? You're going to skip 20 minutes of fight between Flamingo and Luffy? Oh, that is very unsatisfying. That's like Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao unsatisfying. Really? No. That's not cool. That's not. I mean, Oda, he could have easily put more fight stuff. He, 20 minutes and you're going to skip over. I mean, it does give us a time frame on how long his gear fourth can last. So it's good from that standpoint, I suppose. But still, it, it, it's bullshit. And we know it's bullshit. Because this is, like, one of Luffy's greatest moments. Gear 4, holy shit. And you're going to skip 20 minutes of it? Bruh. Like, nah, 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 nah. Now, on to the good stuff. Well, first of all, be before I get to the good stuff, a uh, very fascinating thing, you have the Smile Factory. It's actually moving along with the birdcage because it can't be cut. And I get the feeling that Frankie, Zoro, Kinemon are going to somehow use the bird... Are, so are going to somehow use the... Smile Factory in order to slow down the progression of the birdcage. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're going to do it somehow. Because it's made out of Cairo Seki. And also, Burgess in the corner, chilling. <laughs> He's chilling. I'm like, okay, Burgess, what are you going to do? Like, hey, The birdcage is like around him, and he's chilling. I'm like, like everyone's in a panic. Oh, okay, fine. Fujitora's chilling for the most part. Sabo was like pseudo chilling. So the, the the most powerful dudes. Okay, well maybe I can't say the most powerful because Sabo did kind of beat Burgess, but we don't know where Burgess lies from a power standpoint at this point in time. We have no idea, but powerful dudes. Let's keep at that. Powerful dudes on the island are not sweating the birdcage. Which I think is a clear indication that they can bust out of the birdcage. If if they so choose to. So it's very possible. Very possible. Now, we got the fight. Now, the first one, apparently the fight's already over. It ends off with the Leo Bazooka. Which kind of throws me off because I got the feeling that since we haven't really seen Frankie, Zoro, and Kinemon implement the Smile Factory into... Halting or slowing down the birdcage, the birdcage is probably still, it's still moving. 
So if the birdcage is still moving, Flamingo isn't done yet, even though the chapter says he's done at the end of the chapter with that Leo bazooka, which was a, which had like a Kamehameha stance to it. And we all know that if a Duffu user is knocked out or killed, i.e. Sugar, i.e. Shiki and whatnot, the effects of their power become nullified. So toys return back to their original human forms, giant islands start to fall down from the sky, and so on and so forth. We've seen it before many times. So if the birdcage is still moving, Flamingo is not done. Unless the birdcage can somehow move independent of its creator. Which would be interesting because Flamingo, he's different than most of our users. That's actually very possible. Because Flamingo, in this chapter, he's confirmed an awakened Delphi user. Now, this isn't new, mind you. This is something that Oda applied to Zoans before. The Impel Guard... The Impel Guard. <laughs> the Impel Down Guards. There we go. The Minotauros, uh, the Zebra. They're all dubbed as awakened Zoans. They're not like your average Zoan. They were stronger, faster... They had an increased recovery time. Luffy did a lot of damage to the Minotauros dude, and he still got back up after um, once her face came in there with the whip. She came in there, got him into gear, and he hauled ass and got back into gear and started killing some um, uh, more of the prisoners. So the whole thing here is that the Awakened Zoans, like that's not new, the whole Awakening concept. But I thought nothing of it at the time that much because the Awakened Zoans were meatheads. Like, they just had their clubs, like bonafide trolls. I'm like, so they're stronger, they're faster. I mean, like this Minotauros dude, he was just like, he was moving so fast. He had like the warping lines going. I'm like, shit, like this is big and fast, like awesome Kuma shit. But he couldn't really think. Like, a straight up meathead. Like, Hodge twin status. Muscle, but up here is... It is lacking to a certain degree. You feel me, all right? You see what I'm saying? So, that being said, I thought nothing of it. At the time, all of a sudden, in comes Awakened Paramecia. All right, so if we're going to assume that the Zoans can awake as well as the Paramecia can awake, then shit, the Logia can also awake. And what Flamingo did in this chapter is on some Logia shit. Because, unlike what Diamante could do with his flutter matter, and manipulate the matter in a fluttering way, Flamingo actually altered the composition of matter, and bricks became strings. And I'm like, bro, and very quick, too. Very quick. He made an entire city. All these buildings around him became strings to attack Luffy. That was very impressive. And so going back to the whole thing about the Logia, the reason why I say what he's doing is some Logia shit is because the Logias innately could manipulate the environment around them. I mean, example, Aokiji Akainu. They permanently changed the weather of an island, a fairly large island at that. And polar opposite elements, magma, volcanoes on one side, and fire on another side, ice and blizzards, it's like, what the fuck? And then you have Crocodile, who could touch the ground and make pseudo-deserts at will. And Nell, who could control the weather when he so see fit. And what he's doing is he's doing the same thing on a Paramecia scale. Where he's manipulating the buildings around him and they're becoming strings to assist him in combat. Now, obviously, we, we, we can assume that guys like Whitebeard and whatnot... They were also awakened. I mean, the thing about the awakening part is that, yes, the awakening part was introduced before time skip. So it's not like Armored Hockey, where Armored Hockey should have been a thing before time skip. Because high end dudes had Armored Hockey, they had Busso Sugar Hockey, but it was never shown to actually be Armored's hardening black up until the time skip. So this is not the same thing as that because we had awakened Zoans. But the degree of light shed upon the whole awakening thing is not that much. Now that Oda has made someone like Don Flamingo 
into an awakened devil user, now the scope has broadened considerably. It's no longer some random Zoans getting more power, having more recovery time, and becoming meatheads. It's now full on matter manipulation, matter transformation, if you would, by certain paramecias that can actually reach that level of power, i.e., Flamingo. So, mm, 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 mm. yeah, that's, that's some insane stuff. And the scope on that is fairly broad. It's fairly broad. Because the Paramecias themselves are fairly broad. And when it comes to the Logia, Oda can do a lot of things with that as well. A lot of things. So that being said, that's the chapter for the most part. Because after you have Luffy pretty much dodge all three of those attacks by using that Skywalk. And Luffy, again, very fast, very powerful attacks. Way more potency than in his Gear 3 or Gear 2nd state. To me, it's very obvious. And... Whether or not Flamingo's actually out, I'm not too sure. They say he's out, but I got the feeling it's not that easy. I got the feeling. And also, I do want to point out one last thing. Law in the chapter, he knew that Luffy was overusing his arm in hockey. How do you know that? How do you tell that someone is overusing their arm in hockey? I have no idea. Like where's like the like where's the power bar on that? Like where's the scouter? Like I have no idea, but he somehow knew that. And also, now that gear set, not now that gear fourth is coming to a close after this like thirty minute time limit, if you would, there's gonna be some kind of drawback. I'm curious as to what's gonna be. I can see it being like his muscles deflate. He becomes like an old saggy man or some shit like that. It's right. <laughs> like I can see that shit happening, but that will come. In the following chapter. So that's it. I'm done. I will see you guys guys later. Chapter overall. I think it's a good plus chapter. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's amazing. Only because. Again. More of the chapter could have been dedicated to the fight. And especially knowing the fact that Oda had 20 minutes skipped. Which could have been easily dedicated to the fight. Easily. No doubt about it. So that's it. I'm done. K-Lightning. Rate the video. Comment. Subscribe as always. Have a nice one.